hazard. Okay, so there's one time at band camp, I mean, no, I'm sorry, photography camp, well, to be fair, there was a guitar and singing involved, so... We sat around the campfire and roasted some glizzies. No, I think I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Let's start at the beginning. Come again. It's Jason! For this. I have more energy than Jason does this morning. Uh, he's feeling... Morning, it's three o'clock. Fine, it's three o'clock, and Jason still hasn't gotten his shit together. To be fair, I did take cocaine. Without me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought we were Without... brothers. I thought we were Coke brothers. <laughs> <laughs> we are Coke brothers. <laughs> Cherry Coke brothers. So a few months ago, Trev from the Darkroom called me up asking if I'd be interested in joining a big photography meetup in Joshua Tree, hosted by the Darkroom and Beers and Camera. A weekend of photo walks and drinking beers after beers after developer. Well, maybe not that last one. And since I had nothing else to do other than a Manny Petty, I said yes and moved my prior plans. Like most road trips we take, there's always that age-old question we must ask ourselves. What camera do I bring to show off in front of other photographers? Okay, let me reframe that question. And what camera do I want to shoot all weekend? It's not about vanity, it's, it's about the art. One thing I took into consideration was what cameras have I shot in Joshua Tree and the Salton Sea in the past? And more so, which format? Which has been a lot of 120. So that left me picking up my Leica M6 and the Ricoh R1S. Remember, ABBA, always bring a backup, uh, always. But quite recently, I actually took my Leica and my 35 millimeter lens. So to change it up, I asked to borrow Jason's 12 millimeter Voigtlander lens for some ultra wide action. And to be honest, I also figured others would bring their Leica cameras and I could try out their lenses at some point. Free rentals, am I right? I mean, what are new friends for but to lend out a couple grand worth in lenses for you to use on a hot sweaty day? This first day of the trip would be us just getting to Joshua Tree and meeting the other photographers who would be camping with us. Oh wait, no. Jason and I would be the only ones camping. I guess Trev just really doesn't love us like he does the others. I mean, I guess I can get over it, maybe. Someday? The other thing I was looking forward to was shooting different films throughout this entire weekend. And first up would be some black and white film from Japan Camera Hunter. Lauren bought me some for my birthday and I was excited to try some out. I had never shot it before. So I loaded up my camera and went to mingle with some newfound friends. As you can tell from these first few images, the JCH is a vibe for sure. Super duper contrast for days, either black or white. There is no gray area here. Would I shoot it every day? No. Would I shoot it again? Yeah. There's definitely a place and time for this film, for sure. And like I said, I knew I'd be testing other M mount lenses. So I slapped on Juan's 50 millimeter Voigtlander Apo lens. Overall, I wish I could have used it on a different film stock. One that wasn't so polarizing, but this lens is beautifully made inside and out. Just like you. You have a camera in your hand, yeah. multiple cameras in your hand. Yeah. This place that we were staying was definitely something out of a movie. There's this old saloon that everyone was able to hang out in, talking about cameras and film and, well, more cameras. You know, at first, until we get comfortable with each other and start down that dark road of feelings. But don't worry, I'll keep this episode light. No feelings here. I'm gonna be like Christian Bale in Equilibrium. No feelings. 
But he does get feeling at the end, so maybe there will be feelings at the end. The great thing about fires is that overall, it's a great bonding experience. Since it's cold outside, everyone is forced to sit by each other. So you get to know them real well. It was nice to have a little moment before a weekend of photo walks and nerds with cameras. And yeah, we're all nerds with cameras. That next day, we'd be waking up super early for a family road trip to the Salton Sea. I guess it was a good thing that I stopped at 24 shots of whiskey instead of 36. The fun thing about Bombay Beach and the Salton Sea is that there's usually a different thing to see each time you go. It's the death and rebirth of art. It was really cool to walk around a bit more than we have in the past. I was pretty excited to use that ultra wide lens today. With all the buildings and all the wide landscapes, it definitely would lend for some interesting compositions. Next, fill them up with some expired Fuji color, shot at ISO 100. While walking around, Taylor and I were talking about photography styles. And I said I would love to do some portraits. And then I took these. I actually really like the one where her eyes are closed the most. There's a moment here, unsuspecting and raw. Oh, yeah, that's by hand. This lens is definitely wide. Right now I'm walking to the um, the TVs, but I don't know where the TVs are because uh, I've never walked there. So hopefully I find it. This photo of the blue church is a fun one. Last time I took it on my 35 millimeter lens on Silbera Color. Overall, I'm not quite sure which one I prefer, but the wide lens definitely does give it a vibe. While we were all walking around, I was wondering what the locals were thinking. A huge white van pulls up and a bunch of people get out with their cameras and then we all leave. But I guess with the rise of film photography, they're probably used to it by now. That could have been it. That could have been the one that <laughs> saves us I guess, all. I guess yep. something. That's true. They've got it. They probably won't be. This is all the spots on that video. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's in it. I've been focusing. Holy shit, this is so sick. Oh, boom.
After scarfing down some burgers and beers, we headed back to our little homestead to take a quick little beat before heading out to our first beers and camera event in Pioneer Town. It's pretty amazing how many people came out for this event. That's where the real party began. And I'll tell you what, it was a wild night. I got time to solo. What an amazing time. So many drinks, so many good memories, such good and faithful and accurate footage capturing those moments. Thank God we didn't have to wake up super duper early that next day. But we would still need to get up in time for a morning hike in Joshua Tree with all the photo nerds from a three state radius. But today, I had something special up my sleeve. Birgit from Lomo knew how much I loved Lomo Turquoise. I guess and when I say knew, I mean, I told her a few thousand times since we've met, so she gave me one of the pre-production roles. Naturally, today was the day I needed to test it out. And for a brief spoiler, this film did not disappoint. This hike was a great start of the day. Simple, easy, no 127 hours happening here. But in case it does, I always have my knife with me. Like I always say, APA, always be prepared, always. It was kind of a trip using that ultra wide Voigtlander. I had to retrain my brain to see the world wide and not just 35 millimeters worth of it. The clouds on this day totally helped the vibe of these images. This 12 millimeter ultra wide mixed with Lomo turquoise definitely made some pretty unique photos. Honestly, I can't wait for my shipment of this film so I can explore this stock more. Overall, I found that the shadows didn't seem to have the best latitude like Lomo Purple can, but if you lean into that style and you know what to expect, it ain't bad. And to be fair, this is still a pre-production roll. So we'll see what happens when it's finally released. I'm fully expecting 15.7 stops at dynamic range. To put it lightly, this was potentially the biggest collection of cameras ever congregated in a national park. Honestly, it's really impressive the reach of this photography community. Mmm, Lomo, 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 Turquoise, Lomo, Turquoise, Turquoise, Turquoise. <laughs> After hanging out with all the fine people from this hike, we headed back to our tents to chill for a bit before one last debaucherous beer fest. After two days of waking up in a tent, photo walking, and smelling like absolute bonfire, it was nice to have a little breather and to pound some sparkles before another night of beers and glizzies. Then we got a 28 on my body. It's the grip sauce. It's very little. Oh yeah, I love that. That's perfect. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I think my cyber shot was a highlighted camera from this trip. And yeah, among all those beautiful Leica bodies, sometimes 7.2 megapixels is all you need. Honestly, it was just another great night of chatting with other photographers. I think everyone was just still super high from the new film announcements just a week prior. Maybe that's why everyone was so excited.
And after that last night's events, the cool cat and kittens went back to their ranch to roast some glizzies. And if you don't know what glizzies are, because, well, you're face first in your 30s and you haven't spent enough time on TikTok, it's okay. I gotcha. They're just hot dogs. Yeah. Hot dogs. See, you learn other things on this channel other than just photography. But that last night, we just hung around the campfire, chatting and having a good time. At this point, some of us has graduated from talking about film cameras to our actual lives. <laughs> That's crazy, right? That last day, we packed up and went to breakfast with the crew and said our final goodbyes. This was one epic, awesome weekend. It was great talking with all these amazing people over this four-day weekend. Everyone was truly awesome and a blast to get to know. I'm so thankful to Trev and Phil from The Dark Room and Juan from Beers and Camera for inviting me on such an awesome getaway. I can't wait for the next one, if they invite me, that is. For this journey, it wasn't so much about the photos taken, but the people I met and the conversations and the memories. And at the end of this trip, I came away with a few things. New friends and memories that will last a lifetime, more film than I arrived with, and my understanding of the word glizzies. <laughs> I've just really grown as a person.